many of them are people that were extremely smart. They probably stopped going to class at some point because they realized that the school wasn't really teaching them much. The people that have come from schools across, from Lagos all the way to, we've had people from Borno State. And they finally found a place where people respected their intellectual capacity. And we provided the right infrastructure to support them. So I think what I want to say on how the government can support us in, in young people building sort of enterprises is to just create the infrastructure and move out of the way. It's that simple. And I'll just give one example to clarify my point. This morning, I was reading through the internal company messaging platform, and somebody was asking other people whether they've dealt with SARS recently, because apparently someone got arrested by SARS, became unconscious, and they left him there. And seven of my employees replied, saying in the last month, they've been stopped by SARS. Let me just give context. Each of these people is someone who grew up in Nigeria, schooled in Nigeria, lives in Nigeria, works in Nigeria, they show up to my office every day, and the people that report to them live in Austin, Texas. They are leading teams of foreigners in foreign countries, delivering value for companies that are making hundreds of millions of dollars. But between their house and work, they're being stopped by SARS and being harassed. And I can't stand on the road every day and protect them. That is one example. The other example is literally accommodation. So we've had to, to invest in a 150-person apartment for our employees. We've had to pay the rent and then deduct it from their salary. And we've had to then go and find someone else to provide a bus to get them from the office to work every day. This is just 500 people. But I've built an entire country to support a business of 500 people. We run our own infrastructure, we run our own power, we run our own facility management. If I, everything is basically done in-house. Now, I actually want to thank Lagos State as a state because five, six, seven, eight years ago, our business would never have survived. Today, in most parts of Nigeria, we will not have a business. So because Lagos State has allowed the fiber optics companies to invest in that infrastructure, we can actually have a business. Our business generates millions of dollars a year just by being able to get young people on the internet, writing software, and helping very large companies serve their customers. And so my feedback for government is always, the answers are there. There's nothing new under the sun. It has been invented somewhere else. And the young people in this country, I see them every single day, 500 of them. And I keep saying 500 because four years ago, we were, we, we were zero. I see 500 people, that they wake up every day, you ask them what you want to do with your life, and they can tell you one or two or three problems they want to solve in Nigeria using technology. And we can only do this in Lagos State right now. So my, my sort of like plea for the government is, number one, get the people that actually know the answers to be involved in solving them. Whether they're old or young, I actually don't care. Just get people that are qualified based on merit, get them in the room and have them solve the problems we have. That's number one. Number two, let us stop rewarding bad behavior. If there's someone in any of our cabinets who is not doing the right thing, get rid of them. It's simple. In a, in a private company, every quarter, you know, actually, funny enough, His Excellency the Vice President came to my office just a few, a few weeks ago, and I showed him a room where every month, each department has to present the plan to the employees. And so now, we're entering July, that's third quarter, they're all going to present their plans to the employees. Then, end of July, they'll come and say, this is how we did versus our plan. They'll ask them questions. If you're not doing a good job, they'll scream at you. August, you know, July, August, September. And when someone is not performing three months in a row, we tell them, if you're still doing this thing for the next three months, you're gone. In government, if people are not performing, let them go. It's a service to the people. Let them go. There are other things they can be doing with their time. So that's my second thing is, let us stop rewarding underperformance. All the time, you know, I actually avoid a lot of public events because you end up shaking hands with people that you know are destroying your country. You understand what I'm saying? And you have no choice. Of, of which none of them are present today. Well, no one, no one here is one no of those one people. Here. Okay. But you do that. And you know, if, you're, if, you, if you shy away from it, they'll say you're rude. You don't respect authority. You don't respect age. And so I run away from those events because I don't like mixing with underperformance. And I think number three is if we can do the first, which is you know, just build infrastructure and, and get people to, to get us the right answers. Two, get rid of underperformance. What will happen is people will realize 
that I, I think right now people are moving to Lagos at a crazy pace but they're not actually asking their own government to be accountable because they don't think they can do anything about it so if it was clear that the governor of those different states would throw out on the performance maybe after they live in Lagos State for five years they'll go back home and say hey why don't we kick these people out so number three is let us actually start thinking about how we can look at role models and then try to replicate what they're doing but honestly I don't think government should be in the business of solving the problems I think they should be in the business of enabling infrastructure to be built and then just move out the way sorry that was very long <laughs> Well, very poignant, thank you. Is there something you agree with, Koe? Is there anything else you'd add, like to add to that? Um, the only element I'd like to add to that is actually funding. Funding is critical. Um, as Basket Mouth actually said earlier on, you've got talent, you've got hard work, you've got opportunities, but funding, without funding, talent goes nowhere, to be honest. Um, when you think about how sectors are driven in different parts of the world, there's always some form of sports or entertainment fund that people can tap into so for us for instance as a company we identify talent we're passionate about driving these talents creating visibility around these talents but then the part that is missing is then getting access to funding so we're doing the hard work which is getting the talent but then the part that now needs to be fed into it is having access to funding there's nothing to stop government creating a national sports fund for instance in, in England, there's something called Sport England. Um, I was fortunate, again, to have worked alongside them. It was a very simple model. They generate revenue through different corporates, whether it's a national lottery or just private, private businesses that are pump, mo pump money in. And it's open to anybody that wants to work in sports. Whether you're a talent or whether you want to build an academy, whether you want to become a physiotherapy, you can actually access this. You simply fill out a criteria form and it's put through the system, it's judged, and based on that, you get what you can be able to access based, based on the, the certain levels that they have. So something like that needs to be inbuilt here. Um, until we do that, we're going to continuously see our talents get to a level whereby they become substandard, unfortunately. We have a nation here of, what, 200 million plus people, and yet we're not world beaters in these sectors, which for me is, is quite sad. Uh, you look at the Commonwealth Games that recently happened. How many medals did we win? You had India ahead of us. You can't tell me that India has better athletes than us. No, what they've done is they've created a pathway, a structure, and funding has been critical and paramount to developing and training those athletes. So until we have that here, we're continuously gonna go on a level playing field without excelling. Thank you very much, Corey. So um, I'm getting the look that we're going on a bit long, so I just have one more question to ask. And it's if we do have the funding, the infrastructure is exactly where we want it to be. People are empowered to do the things that they want to do for themselves as well as for their government. What else would you say would be that vital mix? Let's imagine we're cooking. What's your favorite stew? I don't know. Are you an Ogbono person? I'm not, I'm Seafood not okra? Food. You're not big on food. Okay. Are you a bread person? No, that's still food. <laughs> are you a football person then? You have the perfect coach. You have the, the perfect goalkeeper. The referee is doing what he should be, which is, you know, being fair. What would be that extra ingredient that you think is key to making the game enjoyable for everybody watching and participating? I think the thing is you have to have an end in view. You have to have an end in view. Too many times we, we just, just do these things. Everybody's just doing different stuff and hoping, and we have to have an end in view. When you have a vision, Everybody works towards that vision. Even if somebody dies, there is a template. A lot of people talk about Lagos State. What has happened is incremental. One government goes, another government builds on top of it. The disaster that is Nigeria is because somebody comes, sees what has been done, kicks it away, starts afresh. And then Nigeria looks like a country that is starting afresh every time. Because there is no vision. So what must happen is, Thank you. What must happen is for each of these sectors, we need to ask ourselves, what do we want to achieve in the next five years? What do we want to achieve in 20 years, in 15 years? I was saying something about our football. Now, left to me, I wouldn't sack the coach. Why do I say so? Because we didn't, 
do anything in the last five, ten, hundred years to win the World Cup in 2018.